Hey everyone, Tankenstein here. In this video, I've got your first look, overview, and gameplay for the M64. This is a Battle Pass Rank 3, currently 5.7 BR Premium for the Chinese Ground Forces Tech Tree. This is a pretty unique, but also pretty ununique vehicle at the same time being that it's just a combination of the duster that we have in the American Air Tech Tree. This is the SPAA, that's around 5.0 BR, and also the M18 Hellcat, which is in the American, Chinese, and Italian Tech Trees and it may be in a few other ones forgive me if i did not mention those now that being said this is pretty much just the m18 turret with the duster on the bottom so it's pretty similar to both in a weird way but uh but i'll go over where it differs from the m18 where it differs from the duster and uh really what its strengths and weaknesses are now some really important things to note here for one i'm going to be doing kind of like a post match commentary sort of thing so that way i can give you guys as concise of a viewpoint as possible this is going to be a pretty short video because I want to give you guys the details and everything that you guys need to know whether or not this is worth actually grinding for at least in my opinion and for my experience and I'll be going over some of the quirks of this vehicle that said let's get into it okay so as mentioned before I'm kind of doing a little bit different of a gameplay I'm not just going to give you like three minutes of stats without gameplay and just kind of rotating around a vehicle in the beginning of the match or the beginning of the video rather I'm going to try to show you guys gameplay first and foremost now that said the M64 has 500 horsepower compared to 400 horsepower with the M18 which seems pretty good but you're talking about the fact that it weighs 6.3 tons more which is over that's actually about a third more and you're only getting about a quarter more horsepower so you are getting a disproportionate amount of weight compared to the additional horsepower that you're getting and it's pretty noticeable when considering acceleration additionally and this is something a lot of people do not notice is that the m64 actually gets its horsepower 400 rpm higher than the m18 which means that it will take longer for you to actually get that horsepower if you've ever seen a horsepower like bell curve or a uh, horsepower curve rather then you'll notice that you don't really start getting your horsepower until you start hitting close to your maximum rpm so realistically speaking you might only be getting about 400 horsepower at the same rpm that the m18 gets 400 horsepower which is 2400 i believe it's 2400 rpm whereas the m64 gets 500 horsepower at around 2800 i believe rpm maybe it's 26 but you're getting quite a you're getting a little bit more horsepower not proportionate amount to the amount of uh weight that you're gaining but it's getting there later in the torque curve or the, the power curve so you are it's noticeably slower i'll just say that when it comes to acceleration now it also only has 26 shells in total which is really really low and it forces you to actually make a decision as to what shells you want to bring you don't really have a glut of shells and you can't say eh well i'll take 10 fewer shells you pretty much have to take at least three quarters of your maximum allowable shells at minimum it is really really weird and you're going to probably want to bring apcr and and the smoke shell so realistically speaking you might only be going into battle with like 12 to 15 or 16 of your standard uh, APHE or APCBC shells which is not really all that good but that's not all bad because where the M64 actually places its shells are pretty darn good you don't have any shells lining the side of this tank rather except for the turret so in the turret they're going to be next to the cannon itself which does not provide a reloading bonus so it's not count as an auto loader it's just that's where they happen to be uh, stored and they are also stored kind of right in the back near the engine the sides of the hull do not have any shells lining them which is really really nice apart from this though it's pretty much par for the course when comparing the m64 to the m18 they both have the same exact turret traverse speed of between 16.8 and 24 degrees degrees per second depending on crew skill and what modules you have unlocked they've got the same reload speed the same top speed but again the m64 weighs around 6.3 tons more and while quick it no longer feels like a hellcat mostly because it also has the duster as the chassis rather than the hellcat chassis which well the m18 has now a benefit of the higher weight is that it can crash through obstacles a bit more easily and is a touch easier to use while firing on the go compared to the m18 because heavier of the weight your of your vehicle typically it's a little bit easier whereas smaller lighter vehicles tend to bounce around quite a bit this not so much but that's more of a function of both its loss of speed and also again it's heavier weight you'll also notice that around the turrets of the m64 it will say in the stack card that it has 25 millimeters of armor around the entirety of it that is not true there's 25 millimeters of armor in the turret but it's only at the very bottom of the turret and also on the turret ring so it's kind of deceptive because the remainder of the turret so the actual armor 
armor that enemies will be trying to shoot through is still the same 12 or so millimeters of armor that <laughs> that the m18 has so it's not an upgrade at all it's got the same exact armor as a regular m18 in addition visibility is also worse you're getting 88 percent visibility with the m64 compared to the m18 uh, you do get the m93 apcr round however which has 190 millimeters of armor pen compared to the hellcats standard m62 apcvc shell that has 149 millimeters of armor pen an interesting thing to note is that the american m18s also have the m93 but they lack the improved optics of the m64 and the chinese m18 now the improved optics give you 30 percent better visual range for the crew which is really really nice and so this pretty much essentially means that the m64 is a best of both worlds tank in this regard being that it has both the improved optics and the m93 apcr shell and realistically speaking i think that's the only vehicle in game the only m18 essentially it's an m18 variant in my opinion because it more or less acts the same way it just has a slightly different a pretty different chassis but the same top speed but you'll know what i mean when you start playing it now it's the only m18 variant i'll just call it that in the game that has both the improved optics and the apcr shell at least insofar as the standard 76 millimeter equipped m18s are concerned it also features a turret mounted M lmg which is also nice and also of course the hmg that is mounted on top that can be used as an effective uh, light vehicle destroyer or of course an anti-aircraft weapon now the m64 if not mentioned before does include neutral steering whereas the m18 does not have this and in my experience this is where the M64 truly shines, at least when it comes to agility. Are those low speed turns, especially those neutral turns where you're not moving forward or back, it is really, really, really quick with that. And I mean, it, it is really, really nice on the M64. Whereas again, the M18 is kind of not that great in that category. The M64 is awesome when it comes to neutral steering, which if you're a sniper, that could be pretty nice because this is still a fairly quick vehicle. So you can still get from point A to point B pretty quickly. Let's say if you want to hide and wait, wait for tanks to go by you. And now all of a sudden, rather than having to move your tank forward with uh, the M18, because it does not have neutral steering, you can just move it uh, kind of at a pivot with the M64, no problem. And again, very, very quick in that regard. Now I'll just kind of briefly go over my experience with this vehicle and while it's essentially being touted as a Bizarro M18, it kind of feels like it's less than. While it has the same gun power as the M18, of course it does have the APCR shell, which only a few M18s have, and also has the same top speed, it's noticeably slower than the M18 and only has marginally better armor. And that's if you consider that 25 millimeters of armor around the turret to be true, which of course functionally speaking it is not true again look it up um you know if you didn't see it in the intro check it out yourself it is the same exact armor it's just underneath the uh the, the turret itself on the bottom end of it it is a uh, 25 millimeters of armor that's the only spot so don't let that trick you and again it features an additional shell that i will almost never use in the uh, apcr shell now for me i just don't feel like it should sit at 5.7 br well at least i do but i don't if it dropped to 5.3 BR, I wouldn't be upset, but I feel like it would be fairly powerful, even though in my opinion, it is again, a lesser version of the M18. I mean, essentially this vehicle is just an M18 minus its speed. Um, so, or, well, not minus entirely its speed, but it's probably around 70%. 80% of its speed. So while it's still very quick, if you just told some random group of players, uh, you know, that you're going to take away a good amount of the speed of the M18, but instead give you a lower ammo count, but also the M93 shell plus crew optics, what, what do you think they'd say if you just kind of told them, well, you know, we'll we'll do that and uh, keep it at 5.7. Do you think they'd be upset? Probably. I mean, the only other thing that this has, aside from what I just mentioned, is the neutral steering. And I just don't know if all that is enough to keep this at 5.7. I mean, of course, you have the Tiger E, for example, that has the APCR, whereas the Tiger H1 does not. And that's the difference between 5.3 and 5.7 BR for the Tiger 1s. But in my opinion, I just don't really know if the APCR and the neutral steering if those are really enough to keep this thing from 5.3, I mean, of course, I think it's still perfectly functional at 5.7. Don't get me wrong. Uh, but it's just not really, 
it's just a less than version of the M18, especially considering its speed. For most M18 players, you're never going to use a, uh, the APCR shell because you're going to be able to flank around enemies and just shoot them from the sides where you won't need that APCR shell in the first place. So it is what it is. I think that this is just kind of taking away from the M18 strongest point and uh, just making it kind of a bizarro version. Again, perfectly usable. I think it's a good vehicle for what it is. But to be honest with you guys, while I've had a ton of fun using M18s in both AB and RB, the M64, not so much. Maybe it's been bad luck. I don't know. But this vehicle just does not feel as good. And I feel like I am having a much worse time uh, doing anything with this vehicle than I ever did with any M18. So I don't know. Maybe if it's less than for me, maybe it's better than for other people. But for me, again, eh. But with that being said, thanks so much for watching, everyone. Please like, comment, subscribe. Let me know if you guys like this version of my gameplay slash overview. Uh, I used to do live commentary in my gameplay. I just don't really know if that has a place anymore on my channel. It was never really all that good. And uh, I feel like especially when it comes to, to vehicles like this that are battle pass vehicles and whatnot, this gives a much better, more concise, more accurate and clear version of what I want to portray and, and tell you guys rather than what I used to do. So again, please like, comment, subscribe. But either way, thanks again. See you all on the other side. Take care, everyone.